Kung Pao Chicken, inspired by my favorite restaurant, Panda Express. Literally just chicken thighs and seven other ingredients. Now, before we continue on with the ingredients, there are some that you may not have in your pantry right away. And I'm gonna go ahead right now and show you what they are. So you might have to get these. Starting with oyster sauce, rice wine vinegar, which you could substitute with regular white vinegar if you wanted to. Ginger, I mean, you, you might have ginger. I, I don't know, I just, I don't think it's that common. And this thing, that's right. Chili flake in oil, some kind of sauce. But don't get this brand. This is super expensive, a little bit pricey. I've got the receipt here. Um, at, this was $17. You can actually make this yourself at home um, with just simple ingredients. And I, I guess I can make a video showing you how. So the reason why I bought it is I, I really wanted to try it. I've seen this on Instagram. But for those of you, I, I don't recommend you buying this. Save yourself some money. You can make this yourself. I'll link somewhere in the description or in this video um, a recipe on how to make this yourself. So yeah, Kung Pao chicken, what else do you need? You got red bell pepper right here, nice and red. Zucchini, squash, green onions, and some garlic. And not to forget, ginger you can use. Now, this is a trick I like to use. I like to use minced ginger in a jar. This is super simple. I, I don't like buying fresh ginger and cutting it up because it's you have to take off the skin stuff with the spoon. And also, I just find ginger doesn't last that long in the root form. Um, so if you don't live near an Asian grocery store where you can't just purvey yourself fresh ginger, then I highly recommend going to Whole Foods or anywhere else. I, I know, I mean, any, any grocery store near you that carries um, jarred pureed ginger. And this is, the, this is the brand that I've been using for a while and I get this at Whole Foods. Everything here that is shown in the video will cost you a total of about $57 plus tax if you get tax on food where you live. You may or may not. And that's with the, with the chicken. Again, that might sound a little pricey, but this was 17 bucks by itself. And you don't, again, you don't have to buy this. There's a recipe to make this yourself really cheap. Um, and if you do buy the ginger and the oyster sauce and the vinegar, you're gonna use, you're not using the whole thing in the recipe. You'll be using this in other recipes as well. So factor that into your costs. All right guys, the next step is to cut up these vegetables. So let's go ahead and do that. Now once you got your vegetables cut, it's time to do some math of magics. So remember math class and that concept called order of operations? Well, that's gonna be really important here because we have to do a specific order when we fry this up, starting with the garlic, the green onions, the ginger in the background you can't see, and some of that chili flakes first before we put in the rest of the veggies. So I got my pan on the heat here. I'm gonna put some olive oil in there and just a glug, a glug of olive oil, like about that much, just to coat the pan. Get that on like medium high heat. So a lot of recipes call for marinating your chicken with soy sauce and some like cooking wine, but in this, we're, we're, we're gonna make this quickly. So if you have the time, which if you're watching this video, you probably don't, we're not gonna marinate the chicken thighs in soy sauce. We're just gonna cook them with soy sauce in the skillet. I don't think it makes that big of a difference. Um, the reason why is because the chicken will soak up the flavors of the soy sauce as you cook it anyways. Um, and you're also double cooking it again with the rest of the ingredients. So the flavor doesn't really have that much difference. But if you're, if you have a time and you want to marinate it, then go ahead and do it. Let's get in there. So we're just going to real quickly open the package of chicken and just, I just lay them in there. No need to cut the chicken because then you're, you got to pull out your, cutting board and then dirty your cutting board and your knife and then you have more dishes to do. We're just trying to make this quick and easy. The least amount of mess and fuss. Because you know, time is precious. Time is money. There you go. Easy. Some other changes that we made to this recipe is we're not using cornstarch and we're not using dried chili flakes. The reason for that is cornstarch 
I just feel that its only real purpose is to add texture to the dish and it also adds, unfortunately, calories to the dish. So I don't think it's necessary um, for this version. Also, the dried chilies we're omitting because we got these chilies, remember? So no need for double chilies. Now, as the chicken's cooking here, you can see how the sides are starting to turn white. I'm just going to sprinkle some salt onto the chicken here. Not too much because we're using soy sauce in a little bit. We haven't touched the chicken. Literally, I put the chicken in raw with the oil. It's been cooking ever since. What we're looking for is you want to look for a little bit of browning action happening. You see that? Flip it. You see how it's starting to brown? Okay, it's not quite where we need it yet, but we're going to let it rest. I would say probably another two or three minutes on this side. Don't touch the chicken. Don't move it. Don't disturb it. Let it brown nicely. And we're back. Let's take a look at the bottom. Oh, all right. See how brown that is? That's kind of that's what we're looking for here. Let's check this one here. Yep, nice and golden colored. That's a good example. I'll zoom in for you. So that's essentially what we're looking for is that golden crispy frond forming at the bottom of the first side of the chicken. Once that side has started to brown, what we're going to do now is flip it to the other side while trying not to burn ourselves. Now I've got grease spilling everywhere. Flip this real quick. And just to remind you, the heat is still around medium high. We haven't touched the heat settings. All right, once we got the chicken flipped, now it's time to add the soy. And it goes. I would say two tablespoons, just like that. Notice the change in color immediately. And also, you see how the soy is, is cooking at the bottom there. It's soaking into the chicken with its luscious flavors and its delicious umami. I wish you could smell this right now. It smells phenomenal. But what we're going to do is we're on medium heat, medium high heat. We're going to turn this up to high heat real quick to get more energy back into the pan because that soy sauce is primarily water-based. And as it's cooking, it's drawing energy from the pan, lowering the temperature, the cooking temperature. So we need to increase the temperature right now to compensate for that. Now, what I'm going to do for you right now is flip one of these pieces over just to show you how that soy sauce is seeping in. You see that color change? Look at that. I'll flip another piece over. You see that? All that's flavor going into the meat. And what we're going to do is we're going to cook this until the soy sauce starts to dry up a bit. And you'll notice that in the pan, you see how it's starting to condense a little bit and evaporate as it's, as it's boiling off. So we're getting close to that point where we're going to take this off the heat and transfer it into a bowl because it is spraying everywhere. I just want, oh, oh, ah, yeah, I feel a little bit, be careful with this. A lot of, a lot of splatter going on. All right, take a look at that. This is what we're looking for. The soy, and it, it's mostly cooked off. All the water and the soy sauce has evaporated. And what you're left with, oh my goodness, look at that. Oh, yummy. You see that? That color, that's all flavor. And what we're gonna do is, at this point, transfer this chicken into a bowl to hold it as we cook the rest of the ingredients. Just like that. I want you to pay attention to what's left over in the pan. We're gonna save this oil and all the cooked goodness in there. We have about a pound and a half of chicken, a ton of veggies, and my pan is too small, so we're gonna do these in two batches, all right? So I'm going to do half and half. So starting with, again, the fragrance stuff. So your garlic first. Get that in the pan. Just a handful of green onions. Oh. One regular ass spoon. And get that ginger dollop in there. 
I like to use two. I really like ginger in my dish, so we're gonna use two here. One heaping, actually no, two heaping spoonfuls of this. Now you know what? Let's, let's let's live a little bit. Three heaping sp spoonfuls, and we go. Oh my, that smells lovely. Just toasting it up. I wish you could smell the aromas. It's so aromatic. It's so fragrant right now. Let that simmer here. We're on medium high heat. I'm going to put it down to medium. And what I'm looking for is the garlic. The garlic is going to be my indicator of doneness. I want the garlic to start bubbling and sort of frying up. And also the green onions should start to wilt a little bit and that's going to be our indicator to put in the rest of the vegetables so right now it's starting to do exactly that you see how it's fried up nicely see yeah, how it's fried up nicely we're going to put our vegetables in now get the heat back up so our zucchinis, red bell pepper, all of the vegetables, you hear it's sizzling, we're so just giving it a, a quick stir fry here, look at that, doesn't that look delicious, oh yeah, all that nice sizzle, now I'm not turning the heat up too much because I don't want to run the risk of burning the food here. But again, you don't want the vegetables to be cooked to a mush. So I would say right about now should be good. They're still they're still they got some al dente pasta like bite to it. So at this point I'm gonna add half of my chicken back into the pan. Make a little hole in the center, but you don't have to do that. You can just dunk it in. I'm just using half of my chicken. And we'll use the, the, the other half for the other vegetable batch. Now the only reason why I'm doing this is because I have too many ingredients and my pan's not big enough to hold everything together. Right, so here's what I'm going to do. As this is cooking, remember the, the chicken's already cooked. Alright, so we're kind of, we're, 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 we're already breaking the chicken apart. That's how cooked it is with just our spatula here. And I'm doing this because in the sake of time, remember we're doing this because we're cooking this lazy way because we want something quick for the weeknight. We don't want to spend too much time cooking and cleaning up our, after ourselves. So just go ahead and break it apart. And once again, a reminder, we are still on medium heat, medium to medium high. So we're not, we're not up to 11. We didn't turn up to 11 here. And we're giving this a nice stir. That's all we're doing is stir fry lightly. And we're giving this a nice stir. That's all we're doing is stir fry lightly. Getting all that flavor that's in the pan back into the chicken. All right. Before this is done, just a couple finishing touches. What we're gonna do is add some acid. Vinegar here is gonna bring some acidity back into the dish. Just a glug. And I would say one tablespoon of oyster. Be really, be very uh, light with this because it's very sweet, all right? That's a good tablespoon there. Maybe even a half tablespoon. And that's going to finish up the sauce very nice. You can see the chicken's already starting to get real glazy. And remember, we didn't even use any cornstarch. So, again, that's why I don't think you need to use cornstarch. It just adds, it just adds extra calories for a little bit of a gooier texture, right? 
beautiful. Lovely. Delicious.